Dobro jutro, guys. Uh, let's let's get started. It's time to some uh, fun stuff, some gaming stuff. Before that, uh, I want to say that it has been a great event so far. I I just want to thank you guys. Uh, well done. And uh, last year I was not here, but uh, next year I definitely want to be here. It is it has been uh, very good actually. So. Uh, I love the talks and uh, organizations of uh, a lot, uh, and I hope you are going to enjoy uh, my talk also. I'm going to talk about some uh, how uh, some gaming stuff, and I know that uh, almost all software engineers would like to have a build a uh, game or at least understand how to build a game. So this talk could be a good start for you to understand how. We as Peak Games are creating our mobile games in in Unity. So before talking about Unity, uh, let me give you some brief information about myself and uh, my company, Peak Games. Um, actually, I was I was developing uh, enterprise software projects for 10 years, and and uh, mainly uh, backend Java projects. Uh, we were. We were uh, taking some XML JSON files and transforming them to another XML and JSON and serving them as a service. They were not microservices, but they were doing their jobs. So uh, after that, uh, I uh, I joined to Peak Games, and uh, it has been five years that we are we are building games. And uh, I can I can assure you that it is far more fun to create games according to my previous projects. So this is me and. What about Peak Games? Uh, Peak Games has has been founded in 2010, and um, actually the the main intention was to create social games on on social pl platforms like Facebook. Uh, but after after a while, uh, they uh, Peak Games is one of the companies who understand that mobile platforms will be the platform for for social games, and uh, they move their the Peak Games move. Uh, their intention to mobile platform, especially iOS and Android platform. Uh, <clears throat> back then, it was very difficult to. So th the first thing that we should do at the time uh, to create a mobile team, right? Uh, back then, it was very difficult to find mobile game developers. So actually, it was very difficult to find mobile developers at all. So um, uh, we were aware that that would be a uh, very tough, very challenging process for us. And uh, th actually, this is the main reason that we started game development a as a native development approach. I mean, we create uh, games on iOS for natively for iOS and for Android native for Android. So we ha we have tried different technologies, and um, mainly we use UI Kit for iOS uh, games and LibGDX for uh, Android apps. Uh, and Android games, and we have created more than more than ten games. <coughs> uh, actually, we, we have created uh, more than ten games, and uh, and we have created more than twenty games, uh, twenty gaming libraries that that we are using across all our games. And and <coughs> uh, let me move to that. Okay. Um, so here we are. Okay. So um, <coughs> uh, we were. I mean, th those games are uh, quite. Uh, we, we have produced quite successful games actually. So uh, and uh, some of them are in the uh, in the top grossing lists of uh, U U.S. market, and and we we were happy with those those uh, success. And uh, actually, uh, you can say that we. We are we are we were happy with the technology. We were happy with the end results we, uh, about the games, and uh, we have we have the experience. We have the uh, we have the knowledge. We have the common components. Uh, so I guess you might wonder why do we change our intention from native development to cross-platform development? Uh, actually, it is the main reason is uh, the the nature of free-to-play games. Uh, uh, in Peak Games, uh, we are creating free-to-play games in in two main categories. One one is multiplayer, synchronous, real-time board and card games, and the other category is single-player puzzle games. So, both categories are in in the in free-to-play game genre. So, 
to, to have a successful free-to-play game, you have to improve your game continuously. You have to add new things, you have to add new features all the time. So uh, what does it mean for, for us? I mean, the, when we look at from the technical side of it, 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 it means that our code base has to be clean, uh, readable, and extendable. So even if we have the cleanest code base, we still have two separated code base, for one for iOS and one for Android, and there are some inconsistencies between them. That, that, uh, that is the main reason that we want to have single code base so that we will be quick to create a new game and into the market, and we will be consistent in, in the inside the game in between two platforms. So this, this was the first decision that we made, that we are going to go for cross-platform. Cross uh, development. So, second decision, decision should be which technology that we are going to use. So we have discussed a lot, and and we have tried two, three uh, technologies. Uh, actually, when I say tried, we actually create games on those technologies, and then publish those te uh, those games and see see the uh, success if it is okay to go with that technology. First one was Hux. You might not heard about it. It is a uh, cross-platform language. So when you write code on Hux, uh, it, can, it, it can be converted to Java, C++, C Sharp, and some more. And it has a, a built-in game engine coming, it, it has some built-in game engine which is very similar to AS3 uh, game, gaming framework. So uh, we, the runtime, runtime performance was quite good and the the existing we can use the existing experience that we have in in the company uh, because we have uh, very talented AS3 developers and it is open source and uh, it is it is also important so we can theoretically we can reuse the code both in server side and on the client side uh, but there are some downsides also there is, there were no community at all so we were we were alone uh, if we have issues we have to fix those issues by by, by ourselves so and after we released the uh, game that we had experienced uh, uh, and, and uh, experimental game, uh, we, we understand that the game was okay. I mean, it is performing quite good, but the development process was not okay. It was very painful, uh, so that we moved to other option. Uh, it, the other option is libgdx. Uh, we actually, we already using libgdx in our Android uh, game, so we have the experience. Uh, it has strong community, it is open source, and development environment is, is even better than um, Android Studio. So, so we, are, we are happy with libgdx, but if you want to use libgdx as a cross-platform technology, you have to combine with RoboVM, and all the downside is coming from RoboVM. The, it is immature, it is not doing what is it what is, uh, needs to do, and and uh, no support at all. Af actually, after uh, I mean, we have um, we have built an experimental game with this uh, technology also, and I released it. But it, the, the the development process quite painful. Uh, after our decision, actually, uh, the Robo RoboVM has been acquired by Zamarin. Zamarin has been acquired by Microsoft, and they just stopped the project. So we were lucky not to select this this combination. So, last option was Unity, and we, we tried two games, two experimental games with, with Unity, and uh, we were happy with the whole integrated solution because you can make your animations at, in Unity, you can write code in Unity, you can create your images in Unity. Those, it, it has very powerful uh, capabilities, uh, and it gives you a whole integrated solution. And it has uh, asset store that you can leverage different assets in that asset store in your uh, in your game, and <coughs> of course there are some downsides. Like uh, it has limited Canvas support. I mean, the, if you want to build a web game, it is quite limited support. So, uh, but that was okay for us because we are not going to use Unity for our Canvas games, uh, for Canvas platforms of our games. So it is not. Uh, if you if you want to work in a team like us, it is quite painful to work with. Unity, but okay, we, we managed to do that. And after we released those games, we said that, okay, this could be our, our technology. Unity can be our cross-platform technology, but still we don't have, still we didn't uh, release any uh, main focused game for us, like 
we didn't uh, release any single player puzzle game or any board game yet. So we started to use Unity for, uh, for our main games like a new board game. And uh, I will share my experience, uh, actually our experience as a team, uh, while we, we were uh, developing those games. So let's get started with editor, because it, editor is the place that uh, you are going to do almost everything in Unity, except coding, of course. So um, uh, it, is, it is by default has quite uh, good um, uh, functionalities and and uh, abilities that that you can use while developing your your game and uh, but uh, let me show you uh, some of the the parts of it and yes. okay not this one yes so um this layout is is my, actually it is my layout. I I feel that this is this is better to 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 reach all the all the uh, most commonly used windows. Uh, actually, the default layout is is like this. Uh, and I'm using in this layout. Uh, I I don't know if there is a there is a best practice on creating this layout because even in, in our team everyone is using different layouts so so it's up to you to change the layout uh, this area can you see it yeah okay this area is the scene view it is the area that you can you will uh, actually create your game objects and then uh, edit your game objects and place your game object it is the main area that you create your game it has two representations it can be 2d or 3d uh, depending on the project that you are working on you can select which one, if you want, uh, according to your project, as I said. So this area is the hierarchy window. It is it is very related with the scene window actually, because what you have see in in the scene window, uh, you you need to see in the hierarchy window. They are they are the different representation of the same view actually. One is the visual view of your game object. The other is the hierarchical view of your game objects. This area is the is the your game view it's called game view it is the the final rendered area according to your cameras in the game so this area is this view will be the the will be the view uh, that your players will see in on their uh, devices and uh, this 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 one is the inspector window so whatever you select in the third game object or a file, you will see all the properties and you can change all the properties from here. And the, the last one is the project view, which is um, the only the file system view of your assets. So um, let's move. Um, as I said, it's, it has, by default, it has very good functionalities that you can use, but uh, uh, the the, mo the most important part of the unit editor is, is it can hi highly be customizable by by you according to your needs according to your development uh, development needs or development um, styles. So uh, we have we have customized uh, unit editor uh, uh, according to our um, multiplayer uh, real time games, and uh, I will show you some of them that it, that might give you some idea how you can customize those editor. So you can customize the menu items, add new items, add new functionality, or you can customize, uh, you can add new windows at all, and then add functionality on that windows. So let's see. Okay. <coughs> Here, uh, as I said, uh, we are creating multiplayer real-time synchronous game. I will right now. I will connect to our uh, test servers and let's. Uh, Let's go into the game. Okay, um, since we, we are use, we are creating games for mobile, and it is uh, we all know that the the network for the mobile is not reliable at all. So it can uh, the you can see connection drops, uh, reconnections, very quick reconnections, or or sending your your game to the background. It's, it is inevitable to uh, to have these issues. So so 
to be able to, um, so we have our solutions for those, but uh, it, it would be easier, it would, be, it would make development easier, more productive, if you could have simulate those uh, connection drops and everything easily when, when, while we are developing a feature or while we are fixing a bug. So we add uh, uh, a new menu item, it's called pgames, and some functions on that, and one of them is connections. I will show the, this is the, console view, so what I will do is just reconnect it. And as you can see, it has been uh, disconnected and reconnected again, so it will connect to our test servers uh, via socket communication. So it will reconnect it and the user will, will not see any difference that actually. So it is very handy to have this functionality whenever a developer needs. So it is quite handy. And the other is is the, this window. We called it a uh, mock messenger. So uh, I mentioned that, uh, unfortunately, actually, we, we are still using centralized uh, network system. We, we are not using decentralized or distributed system yet. So uh, actually, the, when you are playing our games, you are not playing peer-to-peer. -peer. You are playing with server. So, so communication with server is important. Uh, the, the, the main part of our game. And it, let's say we are going to fix a bug which, is, which, is a, uh, which occurs on a certain situation. So you have to set your server on that state, you have to set your client on that state, and then reproduce that issue. But uh, setting the server is not easy because it, it is, it is the, there is only one test server, maybe twice, uh, uh, may, maybe two. Uh, so it, it could not be possible to set every scenario. So you, you can create a local server in your machine. Yes, that, that is also another option. But uh, a better way we, we have introduced is we just mock the messages like it is coming from server and fake our game that these messages coming from server so that it, our game will think that it's coming from server and then run uh, itself according to that. Let's see. I I just add some messages here. When I just send it, it my game thinks that uh, there is there is this message coming from server, and then it just uh, deal the cards and play it. My opponent will play it, and actually I lose it. I I can run this this scenario over and over and over again, so that I can be I can find the the issue, or I can add new features to to this place, so it is quite handy. Actually, we can also uh, simulate some uh, delays or the, so uh, we, we all know that uh, uh, you cannot get all the packages in, in socket communication, all the packages with, with, uh, with, um, with reliable uh, delays. So some of them are coming very late, some of them comes with all together, so you can also simulate those ones uh, with these uh, mock messengers that we have introduced. So we. We, we just, Im we just um, simulate every scenario that our users can face while they're, they're playing their games. So this was OK. Let's move to OK. These, these, were, the, these were the first two customizations. And this, the third customization that I want to mention about is you can also edit or change the actual main windows of Unity. So, so what does it mean? It can help you to, to, to see how your game is behaving because you have some specific needs like us. I will show you what are they. And you can add or change the main windows according to that. So another, uh, another card game that we are building, uh, so you can understand that we love card games. Um, uh, we, we want to track the cards because the, our, our game's main character is, is the cards. So we want to track the cards. Uh, if they can be on the deck, they can be on the pile, or they can be on, on my hand. So, so and I, they can be uh, disabled or enabled. So I want to see, uh, track those one without looking at logs, without look, uh, adding some logs. I just want to see directly on the hierarchy window. So let me show you that. One. Let's 
connected. <laughs> okay. So let's play now and fill the table. Okay. It will. So as you can see here, there is these numbers. They are they are originally were not there in the main in the hierarchy window, but we add those ones by editing some scripts, by adding some some uh, new classes. We add those ones, and then it shows you which cards are where are, where are the cards. Uh, they were in the deck, and then now they were they were in my some of them in my hand, and they are active. They, some of them are on the deck, and they are. They are inactive, so I can see almost, I can track almost every card, and it is important for us because it might trigger some bugs, it might, uh, it, it might trigger some memory issues if we create a lot of cards. So having, uh, tracking them directly in the hierarchy window, quite handy uh, for us. So uh, these are the, actually, okay, let's not play. And go on. Okay, these, these are the, some samples that, that you can do on the Unity, Unity Editor. As, as I said, it's quite powerful, but it can be more powerful I in your hands according to your needs, according to your, your gaming, uh, uh, gaming style. What, what games are you planning? If, you're, if you are building level-based games, you can create some uh, custom editor windows to create those levels inside the, inside the Unity and uh, to use that editors, you don't need to be a software engineer, so your product managers can create those levels. So, um, yes, it is quite powerful, editor is quite powerful, but still we have to write some codes, right? Uh, otherwise, uh, it might be, <laughs> uh, we don't need to be software engineer to, to, write, to create those games. So, uh, Unity, by default, comes with MonoDevelop. It is, by, it is the default integrated development environment IDE of, the, of Unity. And um, actually, the, when you compare with the, with the other uh, IDEs, it is, uh, it is not that uh, featured or that good. But if you are using Unity on Mac, uh, I guess it is the only option that you are going to use. Uh, I have tried uh, some uh, sublime text, Visual Studio Code the, the, as, as, as my primary coding editor, but since they are not IDEs, uh, it, 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 worked, it didn't work for me. And uh, if you are using Unity on Windows, but you can use Visual Studio, and if you combine Visual Studio with ReSharper, then you have a good development environment, I can say, I can say this one. Actually, I am looking forward to see Rider, uh, which is being developed by JetBrains, and it will be a cross-platform C-sharp uh, IDE based on IntelliJ and uh, ReSharper. So I hope it will come soon. So let's move to coding part. So first, you need to understand that Unity has the control. When you, when you when Unity starts your game, Unity controls your game scene, Unity controls your game game objects and everything. So uh, uh, it is very important to understand when you get the control in your codes. Uh, there are certain events, when those certain events happens, Unity gives the control your, your code. So your code's executing that, uh, exec when, when, when that execution finish, and Unity takes that control to back. So uh, it is very important to understand those, those e events uh, actually, every game object in in the scene has has those events. So, uh, like uh, h here, you can see all the life cycle. There are a lot of them, but I put some uh, some of the uh, most commonly used ones. So, in, on awake, on start, uh, you can initialize your game objects. On update, it calls it every for every frame. Let's see in action actually. Anyway. So in our scene, I will go to, let's say, I want to add another functionality to, to, to this game object. It's a button, actually. But I want to add a new, new component. I will just add this one. I want script, let's say demo script. 
When I click it, it will open the MonoDevelop editor. So as you can see, it it just comes with the with the uh, some with some uh, functions. Actually, Unity works with naming convention. When when you write a start function, it will be called once while initializing your game object. When you write update function, it will be called on every frame before rendering that frame. Or you can you can write on disable, let's say, and. This this function will be called when when your game object has been disabled on the scene, so that you get the control on that event, and then you write some code, and then be give back to the uh, give back the control to Unity. So let's move to do. Okay, uh, those scripts. Are special kind of code pieces that you are that you can communicate with game engine or game objects, but that doesn't mean that you you have to write all your code base into those scripts. So so you can create your own uh, software architectures behind tho those scripts. Actually, it can um, I mean you can use MVC. It is from 80s, but still working. But uh, as I listened yesterday, you can use MVVM, MVI, whatever architecture you want. You can create those, those architectures uh, behind those scripts and use that script just to communicate with Unity game engine or, or game objects. So we use Strange IOC. It's a dependency injection framework. Uh, uh, I think I don't need to mention or tell what, what is dependency injection and why it is needed. Uh, it, it gives you a discipline and, a, uh, and some uh, object creation uh, mechanism. So we are, we, are not ju just use, we, we, just, we are not just using that one for dependency injection, but also we are using for uh, uh, view mediation pattern or, or uh, command signal pattern. So, so it gives us some practices some uh, abilities that we can use in our games. So uh, actually, it is almost de facto right now uh, in every Unity game if they want to use uh, dependency injection. So the other thing that I want to mention is the component-driven architecture. I know that there are there are plenty of discussions are going on like is component-driven architecture can be used with object-oriented programming, it cannot be used. Let's, let's leave those discussions behind. Uh, there is a fact that Unity is a component-driven uh, product. By itself, by default, it, is, it has been built like that. So, so it forces you to use that architecture even if you are not comfortable with that concept. So whenever you want to add a function, uh, actually it is called behavior in Unity jargon, Whenever you want to add a behavior for for your, for your object, game object, you have to add a component. So here, uh, there, in in the, in the slide, I give, I try to give an example. Uh, in our games, we are using pop-ups a lot. I mean, we we want to give information to user. We want to show the game results. We want to show some campaigns. We want to show some friend requests, and everything has been pop-up. Uh, and they have different. Requirements, of course, and instead of creating a po uh, creating pop-up uh, design, uh, I mean the software design uh, with hierarchical, uh, uh, I mean inheritance, uh, with with the, with the approach of inheritance, we use component-driven architecture. So we just combine all the requirements, pop-up requirements, into one script, and then. Uh, whenever we want to make a game object uh, to behave like a pop-up, we just add that script, which means uh, when, when we add that script to a game object, it will behave like a pop-up, and, uh, and also it will be treated like a pop-up by the other game object, objects. Uh, the difference, the, the, the important difference coming here is you can make this one on the fly. Uh, a game object can be a pop-up in certain states, but can be a, can be another thing in certain states, so that you can use same game object for different behaviors when when the certain states happens. Actually, I can speak uh, a lot of things about coding, like, like coroutines, like prefabs, like screen management. But uh, I, I want to move for another very interesting topic: is testing in Unity. 
So when I say testing, uh, I'm not saying uh, the user acceptance or, or QA testing. I'm saying that we as developers, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the test that we as developers are, should do. Some automated tests, some manual tests. Okay. First one is unit test, of course. Um, unfortunately, Unity does not have a built-in support for unit tests. But there is, a, uh, there is an asset in the asset sort called Unity Test Tools. Actually, it has been written by and open sourced by Unity company. I don't know why they, they, they just separated it. But when you import that package into your project, then, your, your code, then you can write unit tests. So let's, let's see our unit tests. This is not working. <laughs> I try to close the Keynote, but is not working. Sorry. Oh. Can I unplug that one to fix this? Sorry? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, can I unplug this one? Because right now it is not working. Maybe if I unplug, I can. Yeah. Testing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's save our demo. Okay. Um, um, to to make to write tests in in Unity, you have to put your test in into a folder called editor. It is it is uh, it's a special name of it. It it, it must be in called editor and uh, when you write test in that folder you will see let me pop up um, you will see all your tests in the test runner window and we have created let's see um, we have created uh, around 200 unit tests uh, actually, the, there is one important, two important points while, while you are writing unit tests in Unity. Uh, where first one is you have all the tests has to be run in one frame, so you you cannot skip any frame. If there is a code in your uh, in your code base that skips the frame, you cannot test. Uh, you cannot write tests for for that code piece. And also, uh, Unity suggests uh, not to use uh, 
uh, the scripts that you have attached to the game objects, not to use uh, those scripts in your unit tests. So uh, let's run them. Uh, it is okay. So um, it is very important to have separate your your uh, code uh, game logic from the uh, from from the views and the game objects and game scenes. So let's move to integration tests. So uh, we all know that uh, testing check uh, individual units doesn't mean that they can work all together. You have to test them all. To you have to t test them when they are working together. So, uh, but unfortunately, you cannot test just your uh, just your code base. You have to include Unity Engine uh, while you are uh, writing integration tests. Uh, Unity has uh, in the Unity test tools that I mentioned before. Uh, there is an integration test suite, and uh, there are two ways to create integration tests. You can manually create a scene and then create your game objects and then attach your uh, code base to the, that game object and uh, manually test and assert your uh, your code base as, as integration. But it doesn't work for us we, uh, because we want to we want to test the real scenes, real scenes that we have uh, published to user. So we we write uh, we as I said, it is an open source tool actually. So we we change some of the parts and uh, able to run unit uh, integration test on real scene. Uh, let me show you this one. I will close the, this one and integration test runner. Uh, we have around 30 integration tests, but I will just run one. Okay, while it is running right now, uh, I will tell the story behind it. So we we managed to do that so that uh, actually I can okay there is a sound but okay so we we, we managed to to create those integration tests and uh, run automatically uh, but it was very difficult very difficult to create a new integration test it takes hours so so we tried to find a way and we what we made is. Uh, record almost everything while we are playing the game on in the editor so how we record it we just log everything i mean every action that we done we have done and every package that has been exchanged between client and server and log everything and then give that log into uh, into integration test it will parse that log and then and then run the, the same scenario that the same scenario that i have played again and again so it was very nice, and we, we, we moved one step forward that why not we, we get the real player's logs and then simulate them in our integration test suite. So we, in, we improve our logging system, and we log almost everything a user does and uh, send them when send the feedback to us or when, when there is a crash report comes. So we just attach into feedback or crash reports and then get log files and put it into the integration test and see what has been happened while the, a real user playing the game. So it has, uh, it helps a lot for, for us. We, we, we solve a lot of bugs in this phase because we, we understand, we see, uh, we can see the real problem while the user playing that game. So as you can see, it is, since it is the real, uh, uh, before that actually, uh, uh, we w and we, we integrate that part with our continuous integration platform. So uh, you, you, just, you, you don't need to run that one in the editor. You can use it in batch mode. We use command line tools of Unity and then integrate our integration, uh, continuous integration system so that every, uh, every day it's these, all the integration tests will be run uh, twice, so we will be sure that everything is okay. And since they are the real time, uh, they are the real user logs, it takes time, of course. The running all of the, it, it is around 30 uh, integration tests, running all of them takes 20, 30 minutes. So uh, it's, it might be okay for continuous integration because it is doing twice a day, but if you are developing something and you want to run those tests, it, it is not acceptable 
to, to wait 20 minutes, right? So we, we try to find a way, and actually we use another um, uh, feature of Unity. I will show you that. We can scale the time in, in Unity so that I will run the test again. You will see that it will be lightning fast. So we managed to decrease that 20 minutes to two minutes so that you can run all the integration tests in two minutes and see that everything is OK. OK, let's move. Other thing that a developer should do is the, um, actually, according to my experience as a developer, we have to test what we have developed as a user of that feature. That is, uh, there is there isn't any doubt about that. So, uh, how let's see let's say you are you are going to build the the ga end game result screen. So, to be able to test that, you have to play the game and see the end end, end game result screen. So, if you have done with your development, it, it's okay to play the game and then see the results. Okay, but while developing, you you should not play all the time, right? You have to find a better way to to see that. The, the end game results screen is working correctly in in different uh, different states, different situations. So Unity with Unity, you can have you can uh, edit uh, the, the 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 code base and the editor uh, and add some test pieces to be able to test your your uh, your weaves, your game objects, and everything. So uh, instead of writing temporary codes in your code base. Uh, which will be updated very soon. Uh, using this this approach, will keep your test code, I mean the manual test code, will be up to date and can be used in one run, so that you can change the uh, change the data that you want to give that screen and then use it according to that. So, so let's come to debugging part. It is quite important uh, because we, uh, as developers, we read codes. Uh, more than we write code. So to, to, to write a new code piece into an existing project, you first you need to understand how it is working uh, to, to be able to consistent, to be able to make it right. So uh, debugging is quite important, and you test some tools. First one, MonoDevelop, yes. It has a proper debugger. You can put a breakpoint, and then uh, in that breakpoint, you can, you can see all the variables and everything. But actually, it is not working. I mean, one of, uh, out of two times, you will, it will crash Unity, either Unity or I itself, you want to develop itself. So we just stop using it. We, we are not using it. We just add logs every corner of our code base and tail the logs. But there is one better thing. You can debug uh, in the editor. You can pause the play and see all the properties of, of, a, uh, of a game object, of a script. Let me show you that one. So I will use Mock Messenger again. Let's start it. Uh, oh, sorry. So right now the time scale is quite heavy. Let me close this one and this one. Yes. So I will send mock messages again to to my game, and while it is running, I can stop it and then go frame by frame, and then and see every. Let's say we want to we want to go to here. In let's make it in 3D mode. Uh, I can see the cards and everything here, and I can see the, the properties here. I can even change it here and see the result. So, and then make how it is going on. So, uh, you don't have a proper debugger from, from the model developer, but you have a great debugger in the editor that you can use for, for your needs. Let's stop it and then going on. Actually, there is one more step further down. You can debug each frame. Uh, I show you, you can debug frame by frame, but you can 
sometimes you need to know what is happening in one frame, what is the rendering sequence of one frame, so you can debug that one also. So I will show you very quickly. Let's start it again and open the window of frame debugger. So when I enable it, it will show me all the in one frame, it shows how secu what is the sequence that it's drawing. As you can see, it starts with the background and then add some images, add some more images, add some text, and you, you can, by seeing that, you can, uh, you can make some optimization on your rendering side. So if you have a lot of items, a lot of, it is called draw codes, I'll, I'll come to uh, just in a second. So if you have a lot of calls, that means you, you are going to have some glitches in your, in your game. So this frame debugger is quite handy to see what is going on in one frame. So next step is profiling Unity. So the first one, actually, uh, creating a, a Unity game is quite easy. But to make a real product, to make a successful product in Unity, you have to deal with all these performance problems and everything. So you have to understand. So we are, we are still learning those, those uh, techniques and everything. I will share some of the techniques that we are, we are using. So I will be very quick. Uh, uh, the first one is sprite sheets. You might talk about sprite is some uh, actually is two two dimensional bitmap that is integrated into your uh, game scene. So it is actually image. And when you uh, when your game engine sends that image to GPU hardware to draw, it's a one call. It's called draw call. So if you have more draw calls, you will have the glitches in your in your game scene. It will not be smooth. So you, ca you have to batch them into one file. So it calls Atlas file. I'll show you our, our Atlas file. For instance, our UI Atlas, sorry, not this one. Our UI Atlas is this. Every image is that. We are just sending this file to GPU in one batch so that we don't have a lot of draw calls. But there is one, uh, one important thing. When you load this image into memory, then you, you increase the memory usage. So you have to have a balance to be able to make, uh, otherwise you are going to have glitches because of the memory usage. usage. So you have to have a balance. And let's move other sides. Oh, OK, sorry. I will stop this one. OK. I'm finishing. So you can use Unity Profiler to your CPU and GPU uh, or memory usage and everything. But actually, the officially, Unity says that uh, instead of using Unity Profiler, profiler, you can use Xcode instruments. It is better. They, they already say it like that. So you just send your uh, binary to iOS and then debug or profile your, your uh, game in Xcode instruments. Uh, I recommend that you can you can find the, what is what is impacting your start time, what is impacting your runtime performance or or memory memory uh, usage. So last thing, continuous integration. I'll be very quick because they want to be uh, they want us uh, me to finish. So uh, con in for continuous integration, I, I want to mention about structure of our project. Uh, we have some plugins we have created because of the um, like for native uh, functionalities of mobile platforms like in-app purchases, we have to create some plugins and uh, and then we use that plugins as DLS in our games and we create C# -sharp libraries uh, written in C# -sharp that we can use all of, all our card games uh, or all all our games actually. So we have five jobs, five Jenkins jobs. We are using Jenkins for continuous integration and we are we have five. Uh, jobs for for each game. One is to create to to build gaming library. The other is to to run the tests of our games. The other is to cr create binaries for Android. The other is create binaries for iOS. I am saying binaries because we are creating two binaries in in the job. I will come to that. Uh, we are creating two binaries because we want to send one binary to Hockey App to be able to test test tested by our testers and product managers. 
and uh, sending another uh, with, with a different configuration to uh, test flight and uh, Google Play Store so that they will be ready if our, uh, it will be uh, our product product manager hands that if they are okay with that release they can release it by themselves without need of any development or any engineer to, to release that so if they are not okay with that they just send us some feedbacks we just change those issues or fix those issues and then we we just release it to hook up and test flight and play store again so uh, as I said in the beginning uh, this is it has never been easier to create a game before with with all these game engines and all these App Store Google Play Store markets so I really recommend you to try uh, to try unity or other game engines to, to create a game you will see that it is quite enjoyable and and uh, satisfying while if you create the, uh, if you create a game so you, it is better to try I will say so I guess I have over my time if you have any questions I can try to answer but if I guess I don't have any time okay <laughs> if you have any questions I'm here just come and uh, find me that we can talk about it thank you